Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to cut the base off of any model, add in your own custom base, and maybe a couple of other tricks along the way. Alright, let's get to it. First, I want to say a huge thank you to all the different artists that create these models and then give them away for free. I really appreciate that you make it possible for people to jump onto these sites and get printing immediately because they find files that they're excited about and they don't have to spend a lot of money on. So I sincerely thank you. That being said, if you're planning on using the files that I have here in the video or other files in the future, definitely consider tipping the designers. It's always a really great way to say thank you for the awesome work they do. So I picked this model because, as you can see, both feet are sitting flat on the base, they're on the same plane, so cutting this one would be really easy. And there's two different ways that you can typically do this. If you're lucky, you can get a really clean cut without actually having to do any cutting, and you can do that by going to Edit, and then go to Separate Shells. And once that completes, the object browser should pop up. And now from here, what you can do is you can click down through and highlight the different models that you have on screen, and then also all the different shells that you just pulled out of this model here. And we're pretty lucky in that the very first model is the base itself. So what we did is we went through and Mesh Mixer pulled apart all the different pieces that it could find that this model was made up of. Sometimes you'll have models that you can do this with, and sometimes you won't. But this one's pretty easy in that we were able to pull it apart, and the base is its own model. So we're just going to highlight that one, and we're going to hit delete and then the base is gone. But now we have the issue where now this is a whole bunch of different meshes, so we have to put it back together. And that's really easy to do using the object browser. We're gonna click on the top part of this uh, this first shell here, and we're gonna go down to the very bottom here, holding shift, and we're gonna click this one. And now it'll highlight all of them, and go back up just to make sure we didn't highlight any other ones, and we're gonna hit combined. And then when that's done, you may see that the model's been broken up into different colors like this. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the model, it's just highlighting the different shells. So we can go ahead and hide the object browser. Then we can highlight our decorative base, hit edit and go to transform. And then we're just gonna bring it up under her feet. And I'm gonna grab the little white box in the center here. And then I'm gonna just start changing the scale a little bit until I feel like it's a good size to fit under her and match uh, the size of the model. So it looks good there. I'm going to hit accept. And now we have to raise this model up a little bit. So we're going to hit transform again. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit using the mouse wheel. And I'm going to grab the green arrow and just start lifting her up until I feel like she's sitting on this base nicely. So basically, we're just moving the model up and down, trying to find a spot where it connects with the base but doesn't go so far into the base that you start to lose detail. So right about there looks pretty good. Should connect just fine. You've got enough of an overlap here on the toe where you can see it's going down about probably half a millimeter into the base. And then from here, we're going to hit accept. Then with this model highlighted, we're going to hold shift and also click the base and it'll bring up this window over here where we're going to hit combine. And now everything's been combined into one file. So we can hit file, go to export. Then once you give it a name, hit save. And now with that done, let's move over to this other model. So with this model, if you try to follow that same process, when you get to separate shells, what you're going to find is that it's not made of multiple shells. It's just one piece. So in order to get the base off of this model, what we're going to have to do is use the plain cut tool. So what I'm going to try to do is drag this down and get it just below that back right foot. So that's a little too low. There's too much of the base there. So we're trying to just get it to the point where only that back foot is highlighted and the rest of that base becomes translucent because what becomes translucent is what's going to be lost. So right there, it looks good. So I'm going to hit accept. And now that base has been cut away. And what we're left with is a beautiful cut on the back right. But on the front left foot, it's still up on that um, stony outcropping there. Because th these are on different planes, so it's going to cut right here. But if we try to cut this foot here, you're going to be cutting on right through his shin. And vice versa, when we cut here, we're going to be leaving these rocks. Now, it's up to you. If these rocks look good and you want to keep them, then you don't have to do anything else. But if you wanted to cut these off and add something a little bit more modern, and that's why I got this crate here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, instead of using the plane cut tool again, just as is, we're going to go to the selection tool and we're going to drag a lasso right around these stones here. And that's going to highlight just this area. Once that's selected, you're going to go to edit and now you're going to go to plane cut. So now when we're using the plane cut function, it's only going to cut in the area that we've selected. It's not going to cut the entire model, which is a really useful feature when you want to make small detailed cuts. 
And now what I'm doing is just zooming in and I'm going to look from the bottom because I think that's going to make it easier to see where the, uh, the stone stops and the foot starts. So I'm just going to kind of move up until I see that. So right about there, it looks like I'm going to get down a little bit more right about there, I guess. Looks like I'm going to get most of the uh, stone gone and leave um, most of the foot intact. Now I can tell that because if I drop down a little bit, you can see the outline of the stone here. And I'm looking for a green outline that's going to be mostly just the solid foot, which like I said, is right about there looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit accept and that's going to cut away the stones and leave me with just the foot. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to bring in that base, the same base we used before I have it, um, hiding. So if I go here, I can, uh, in the object browser, if you hit this eye symbol here, you can make objects appear and disappear, uh, depending on, you know, when you want to use them or if you want them to, to stay in the scene, but you don't want to be working around them. So again, this base is way, way too big. So I'm going to move that down a little bit and I'm going to shrink it just a little, not too much right about there. I also think that I want to spin this because I want this, um, more rough stone to be on the other side of them. So I'm just going to spin the base 180 degrees. So right there looks pretty good. Okay. I like that. That looks good. Move it just a little bit more. Hit accept. And now same thing as before. It's not quite at the right spot. You can see the foot's down a little too far. So now we're going to highlight the main model. We're going to go to transform, move it up. And then I think about right there looks pretty good. Just a little bit more up. Okay. That looks good there. So I'm going to hit accept. All right. So he looks pretty good. We've got him in a good spot there. I'm not sure if I like how that foot is interacting with the cobblestones there. So I think what I might do is make this base a little bit bigger. Bring this over again. So it's more like this. A little bigger still. All right. That looks a lot better. I don't really like, cause this is such rough detail here. It doesn't really look like it was going to sit well and not kind of obscure some detail of the foot. And, um, I wanted to move it over a little bit to make that a little bit cleaner. So I like that look a lot. So I'm going to hit accept. And now, like I said before, so we've cut this foot out or we've cut the, um, the scenery that was below the foot out. So now his foot's just kind of raised in the air. We need to put something under there to make it look a little bit more natural, which is of course why I have this crate here. So we're going to go to transform and we're going to grab that, um, white square in the center again. Oop, missed it. There we go. I'm going to drop that down a little bit, bring this over and move it up a little bit. Okay. So we're going to shrink it down pretty good. Now, the nice thing about this being a square crate is that we can absolutely shift it in one orientation and it shouldn't look too strange. So right now what I'm doing is, um, uh, shifting it in one plane only, and it's kind of squishing it a little bit, but as you can tell, it doesn't look that weird because it's a, a square flat box on uh, all four sides. We can shift it without it getting too disproportionate and looking really strange. So that looks pretty good. I'm actually going to try to zoom in here and see if that's touching enough of the base end of the model. So I think that should work. So there you go. Now we've added a kind of a, a little bit of a, a decorative flair to this one. So it's going to look pretty good with that base and it's going to look more natural. Um, like I said, if this is, if, if for whatever reason, I like, I actually like those stones. Um, but if for whatever reason you didn't like the, uh, the stones, you didn't like that base and you wanted to cut it away and add something else, this is how you can take a model that has, um, a different stance where the feet are on two different planes and still use it with a, a more decorative base or a different base. Um, and of course you could do this with anything. You could do it with a barrel, a chest, uh, a small animal. If you could find something that worked, uh, whatever, you know, tickles your fancy. Now, if we wanted to combine all three of these into one model, we would do the same thing again. We would highlight any one of these models, then hold shift and highlight the rest of them. Then this window will come up and we'll just hit combined. Now, before we combine this all together and call it done, I'm going to give you one more tip. And this will be for anyone who wants to print the base and the miniature separately. So if you're somebody who wants to add some extra details to the base or paint it separately, cause it makes it a lot easier to do that, then this will be a really easy way for you to create alignment pins so that you can put the uh, figure back onto the base later on and make it really easy for you to do that extra detail and put it all together as a last step. And to accomplish that, what we're going to do is highlight 
just our little crate here and the base. We're going to hit combine. Then from there, we're going to go up to view and then object browser. Then we're going to hit the little eye symbol next to the base. You'll see it'll turn translucent. And then once you click on the barbarian, it'll disappear completely. Now from here, what I like to do is to swing the position down under the model. And from this position, we can easily confirm that he did not in fact skip leg day. Next, we want to add pins. So to do that, we're going to go to the mesh mixer button, which is the sphere with a face on it. It is slightly haunting, so I guess just try to ignore it. And from here, you can add either a cylinder or a square. I usually use a square just because, especially if you're going to be doing just one joining point, if you use a cylinder, it allows the model to spin 360 degrees around that point. So I always recommend using a square. If you're doing two, it's not really going to matter, but square is just easiest. So that's what I stick with. And then you're just going to click and drag and put it roughly where you want it. And uh, from here, you can click and drag this far um, arrow here. If you drag away from the model, it makes, you it makes it larger. If you drag it towards the model, it makes it a bit smaller. So we want to go just kind of get it to where it looks good, where it looks like it's going to, you know, you don't want to go super small with it, but you don't want to go really large. You want it to stay within the outline of the model. And then you want to use the sphere in the center here to drag it towards the largest part of this, in this case, the foot, because we want to have a good distance between the pin that we're creating and the edges of the model. And the reason for that is we're actually going to be taking this pin here and carving it out of the model. So this is going to become a hollow. And if we do that and we have this too close to the edge, say like over here, what this could potentially do is it could potentially cause a really weak spot because it's too close to the edge and there won't be a whole lot of material here. So you want to make sure that you get it, like I said, in a, a thicker spot where there's a good distance between the hole that we're making and the outside of the model, just to make a good thick wall. Now from here, before you hit accept, make sure that it doesn't say append to mesh. You want to make sure it says create new object and then hit accept. And then repeat the process for the other foot. Now we have both of our pins added, but we want to adjust them now. So we're going to click on it, go to edit, transform, and I think that this one, I'm going to make it 1.5 just to make it easy to keep track of. And I'm going to make all the uh, values 1.5 just like I said, to make it easy to keep track of. And I'm going to do that to both of them. Now, the next step is really important. You want to make sure that you click on each one of these pins individually and hit duplicate. Now it's going to bring up the uh, browser window again, and you're going to hit the little eye symbol on the new copy that you just made. So hit that eye symbol and it'll disappear. And we're going to go to the next one, go to edit, duplicate. You'll see the little, uh, the new copy has appeared. We're going to hit the eye symbol and make it disappear. And now that'll make sense later, but I'm not going to bother explaining it right now because I'm a visual person and hopefully you'll learn uh, by seeing it. And I don't want to try to explain something that I can't show. So now from here, we're going to actually adjust these pins again. Now, remember, these are going to be the hollow or rather they're going to be carved out of this model and create a hole. So we want to make them a little oversized so that the pins on the base are going to slide into this a lot easier. This also helps account for um, any kind of dimensional accuracy issues you might have with your resin expanding or if your FDM printer isn't quite dialed in or if it's just got a little bit of play because no machine is going to be perfect. So you want to give yourself a little bit of a variance here by making the hole a little bigger. But it's very important that you create copies before you go through this step, not after. So once you have your copies of the size they are now, we're going to oversize them a little bit by again highlighting them and going to edit. Then up to transform, and we're going to make each one of them 0.3 bigger. So I'm going to make this one instead of 1.5, we're going to make all of these 1.8. In my experience, that's a good size. You may find that your printer is more or less accurate, depending on whether or not you're using a resin or an FDM printer. So this is something you might want to try to dial in first before going through this process. But if you already know that your machine has pretty good accuracy, then hopefully have a pretty good idea of what your machine is capable of. 0.3 is usually a good size for me as far as oversizing my pins. But like I said, your machine might be different. So hit accept and then do the same thing on the other pin as well. Then once that's done, you want to click on your model, hold shift and click on the pin. It's really important that you click on the model first and then go to the pin because you're telling mesh mixer that you want to subtract the pin from the model, not the other way around. So you want to click on your primary model and then the secondary model after. Then you're going to go over to Boolean difference. And then before you hit accept, make sure you adjust your settings so that they look like mine here. Then hit accept and do the same thing on the other pin. Then your model should look something like this. And now from here, we're going to do the opposite. Go back into the object browser, 
This time we're going to hide the barbarian, and now we're going to bring out our base, and then our two pins. Then click on the base, and the barbarian should disappear. Now, technically, the exact opposite of what we just did would be a Boolean union instead of a Boolean difference, but because we're adding these pins to this base instead of subtracting, all we have to do is hold shift, select each object, and then hit combine. Then from here, if we pan down a little bit and go to our object browser, you can bring the barbarian in and out and see that he's going to stand perfectly on those pins and everything is nice and aligned. So this will make it really easy to print them separately and combine them later. And then the last step is just make sure that you export that base separately. So hopefully after watching this video, you now have the tools to add all kinds of really cool custom bases to any model, no matter what orientation they're in. If you did find the video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. And once again, if you're interested in any of the models I used in the video, you can find them linked down below. All right, let's go print something.